Joel, uh, the logical spot, I think, to start is a little bit with your feelings about Silver Spoons. You're doing it. You're going back to doing it. Fun show to do. Interesting show to do. Does it become routine? What? I, I think it's both of those things. It's, it can be a lot of fun. It can be interesting. You know, we, we deal with some themes that become interesting, and you learn things that you didn't know. Uh, it can also be very frustrating. And the best part of it is that it's frustrating, because if it weren't, and if I didn't care enough to be frustrated occasionally by, uh, by the things we have to do, uh, by the way you have to deal with, you know, producers and directors and things, and what, are, what is all of our concepts of the show and of my character and things like that, I, I think that I would no longer enjoy it. I think the thing that keeps it enjoyable to me is that it does change. I have read, and I think everybody knows, how much Ricky Schroeder and Aaron Gray can't stand you, Higgins. So what's it like working with them? <laughs> Gosh, it's terrible. <laughs> I didn't know that. Now it comes out. After four years, you have to tell me this. You're having a good time you know, with them, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we have a great time. We really do. I just talked to Aaron's in town doing a Bloomingdale's ad. I just yeah. talked to her the other day. And, uh, so I'm in contact with them all the time. I happen to like these people. We like each other, and I think that's what comes out on our show. Our show is basically about love, and if we err, we err on the side of caring too much. And that's so much better and so much more appealing. Silver Spoons, you're a husband, you're a father. That's the way we know you. But this doesn't parallel the life, the real life of Joel Higgins at all, does it? No, I don't think you'd say that. First of all, I'm not a father or a husband. It's interesting because I usually, I think I'm, I'm kind of sort of uh, solid Midwestern stock, so I, I get cast that way several times. But no, I'm not. I, I don't know why. I never thought I'd get to be this age without having kids. Uh, you know, it, Have you it, ever it been married, plan. I've never been married. Now, I've been with Stacy now for six years, and we're still not married. But uh, obviously, I have a problem with this. No. <laughs> I think it's just that, you know, she's considerably younger than I am, and it, there's never just seemed to be any big rush about it, and uh, it's something that probably is going to happen in due course, and it's time. You want to be a father? I think so. I think so, yeah. Uh, I, I don't take it lightly. I don't th I'm not like, you know, I'm not the yuppie ideal of saying, okay, I've got this now, I've got this now, I've got this, I better have this, you know, meaning the child. I don't think it's that way. I, I hope it comes out of, you know, getting married and loving somebody and therefore wanting to have a family. But, and I know it's tough now, too, to have kids, and it scares me a little bit, and I think it should scare everybody a little bit, and I think it scares me enough to care about things. But, but with, with both position and acquisition come responsibility, and that responsibility is tough sometimes. You want to go back to being the fool I was when I was loading beer trucks in Boston or running around in Europe with my buddies. You Were know? you loading beer trucks in Boston? Sure. Sure, I used to live in Charles. Uh, I, I loaded beer trucks in Charlestown, and I lived in on Central Square in Cambridge. The buddy of mine who was going to MIT for his doctorate at the time, and I was basically sort of just one step ahead of the army at that juncture. In fact, they caught me there, <laughs> and I spent three years after that in the army. Salvage is a show that you did with Andy Griffith, and I know he means a lot to you. Talk a little bit about Andy Griffith, will you? This is a great story about when I met him. You want to hear it? Sure. So I came out to I come out to Hollywood the first time, or I came out to do this this screen test for Salvage. Now, I had been doing a soap in New York, and they brought me out, and I'm sitting in the makeup chair getting makeup in, and in walks Andy Griffith. You know, my heart. <laughs> he says, "How you doing? Fine, fine. How you doing? I mean, he's exactly what you'd expect him to be. I mean, he is Andy Taylor. You know." sat down in the chair next to me and the guy took out the snippers the the hair guy was the next chair and he said now and he started cutting Andy's hair and Andy said well just a little off he said it's just a real light trim I just want a little bit around the ears okay he said yeah gets all done then he got in the makeup chair got his makeup on her we're walking out to the screen test and he turned to me and said I didn't know that guy was going to cut my hair I thought it was another makeup man <laughs> <laughs> but he never said I don't want a haircut he just said, We'll take it real light around here, you know, <laughs> the sweetest man. He is. And he taught me basically to be product oriented, I think. And I am to this day. Uh, the best lesson I've had as an actor is you are not infinitely interesting. The show can be infinitely interesting, but not you. And he used to all the time say, put the camera on the boy, get it off of me for God's sake. It's been here long enough, you know. And also the caring about every detail about the show, about how it all works and how he fits into that picture. picture. And that's what I've tried to learn to do as, a, as an actor, is not to be me, me, me all the time. You know, oh, more close-ups for me, you know. You do jingles. 
jingles mm -hmm. that we would know, commercial jingles. Yeah. Could you do a few for us? <laughs> I don't have, I'd have to do a Macapulco. Yeah. Do, do a Macapulco, <laughs> yeah. And not only that, probably without any instruments. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Oh, let's see, you know, I'll bet you, uh, Mom's No Kool-Aid is the one for kids, right? We did, it was on for a lot of years. We did All the World Loves M&M's, still on. Pure Milk Chocolate Joy for everyone. And uh, my favorite that we ever did was It's Meal Time from Now On, My Finicky Friend. I like that one, because it's about dogs, I like dogs. <laughs> and uh, we, we were, we've written quite a few of them. I gotta say, quite honestly, I don't write them much anymore. My, my, the business is flourishing, my partners are doing it, I'm taking the money, and it's great. Yeah. I'll tune in, I'll see one on there, and I'll call them up and say, where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of things going, don't you, Higgins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you're an actor, you have this constant, constant feeling of insecurity. I don't know what it is, what it's born of, it's probably what makes you an actor in the first place. And, uh, and you just, I just got to keep generating stuff just to make sure it's going to be okay. You know? You're going to obviously continue with Silver Spoons, but what would you like to do? What, what else is there burning for you to get involved with? Two in my career, two in particular. I want to finish a musical that I'm writing with my partner. It's very important to me to have written this, whether it closes in one night or not. I told myself I would. I've had it for three years, and I've been trying to get the time. I want to do that. The second thing is I want very much now to begin to create and develop my own projects and get that little bit of, uh, of you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a thing in an actor. Uh, 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 film is a director's medium. Television is a producer's medium, and the only time with, a, with an actor you're really in control is when the curtain goes up and nobody can say cut. So there is a, there's a yearning to be able, instead of always having to say to somebody, well, you know, I could be wrong, but what about this suggestion, you know? To be able to just once, as the creator and put her together, to be able to say, I'm not wrong, I'm right, and I want it like this. <laughs> you know what I mean?